Okay, today we have a Kellenberger uh, 1000U to show you. This is a really nice machine. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes and take off some of these covers and guards so that I can get a little bit closer in there and show you how the wheel head can swivel around and uh, some other stuff about the machine. So uh, we'll be back in a moment. All right, so as we walk around the machine, I just want to show you here, this is the, the lubrication system. This is a separate, independent, uh, self-standing has its own filter, it has its own pressure gauge, and it goes back around and into the machine in various spots. It's got controlled by a timer uh, in the electrical cabinet. You can set the duration or the frequency of it coming on. Uh, it's great. And over here, we have a really nice uh, paper filtration system, paper band filtration system. Uh, everything dumps into here and comes out this pipe. Uh, it's going to catch your, your tools if you drop them in there. And then uh, you have this paper that eventually fills up and it will lift up this little float, causing a motor to make this paper go advance until uh, the paper becomes clean and water starts going down through it again. Uh, and again, everything kind of plugs in back here, but there's, this, as you can see, there's only a handful of connections. There's a spindle, there's a hydraulic pump, and a couple other things that go out to the workhead. Most of the things are with plugs. So there you have it. Okay, so we removed the back uh, couple of splash guards that go around the outside of the machine and I didn't go any further than that. I moved the coolant tank out of the way so I can get back there if I have to. Uh, so what we have here is the machine is wired for 480 volts. Um, hydraulic unit is outside of the machine with a couple of connections and uh, connecting power up to the electrical cabinet. 440 volts, you got two plugs here to connect your electrical to the machine, and that's basically the whole hookup. Uh, your air and your water, I guess. So this is the 1000U model, um, universal machine. I have it running right now. I'm gonna start the grinding wheel. This has two grinding wheels on it. It has a smaller wheel on the right side uh, for face grinding, and the larger wheel here would be for your OD grinding or external grinding. Uh, when this thing is running, there's a, a pump inside that as it's spinning, it's making oil. And in this window, you want to make sure that you see your oil uh, spraying out of these two nozzles. They kind of intersect like that. It takes a couple of seconds for it to come up. Uh, if you don't see it come up, I would shut the spindle off. Okay, so your controls are all up here on top of the deck. You have a control here for jogging the work head. We have this right now set up uh, for a dead center, grinding between centers. Uh, if you wanted to grind uh, with a chuck, you just have to line this up here and slide that lug in there and then take uh, the, the, the stop pin off from the back of the machine. This is a servo-driven motor. There's a Siemens uh, Simo drive uh, in the electrical cabinet. Uh, this motor has just been um, refurbished by Siemens as well as the drive. Uh, so this thing is really good to go in that respect. Uh, so you got your jog button, you have a spark out control, you have the control here for the uh, functions of the machine, whether or not you're going to do plunge grinding or traverse grinding. You have a couple of dwells. This is your table reversal lever. This is your speed of the table. And this is uh, a locking in and out of this rapid approach. You have your in-feed hand wheel here, your longitudinal hand wheel here, your main control lever is here. This is the speed for the fine feed, the in-feed speed for your fine feed. Starting the wheel, starting the spindle, and a couple of other little functions. And over here, you have your speed control for the workhead. So right now, if we want to go in and start a cycle, the wheel slide moves in, the table starts going, and the workhead comes on. As long as you have this mode selector set up here for uh, feeding on the left side and feeding on the right side, you'll see this move each time it reverses. If I wanted a dwell, I could set a dwell with one of uh, both of these two knobs here, one or the other, or both sides. Table speed is here. I want to slow the table down. The machine is a universal. When we spin the work head around, or use the face grinding attachment, you might not want to have this rapid in and out. Uh, you don't want to have it on ID grinding. So this lever here and this control here 
has to do with setting that restriction so that it doesn't move back at the end of a cycle. So this will just feed down until it gets to zero. Now you can help it along with this lever here. It'll, it'll just let the thing feed, uh, feed on its own. You can bring it down until you touch your workpiece. Or you can stop the feed altogether and retract the headstock without your infeed hand wheel backing up. And maybe you want to make an adjustment. Maybe you want to make sure your part is going to be of the right size. And you can come back down in and open this up and pick up your feed again. That's a pretty nice feature I've only seen on Kallenbergers. So this is going to work its way down to zero. I'm going to help it. And at one point, it sparks out. It'll only spark out when it gets to a, a left reversal or the other reversal so that it doesn't reverse like that or kick out in the middle of a workpiece. You have your tailstock over here. There's a diamond mounted in the back. We also have a diamond holder that, that mounts on the table. The headstock here has a, a locating pin. This is a tapered pin. You have to find the hole down at the bottom when you want this to be uh, at a 90 degrees. When you take this out and loosen these two bolts back here, you can swivel this now. This is a Morse taper five uh, spindle taper. All right, so that's pretty much it on the cylindrical grinding part of it. We have plunge grinding. I can select plunge grinding. I'll shut the table off. And now when I come in, my hand wheel will just feed down continuously. There is a fine feed. I got my spark out set too low. This is your stop, your dead stop. You want to make sure that's actually working or turned. Now it's at zero, and it kicks out. And the more you increase this time value over here, and that's the fine feed. This is the spark out. That's for the plunge grinding. Um, headstock. Over here we have a rheostat that controls the speed. Both the longitudinal hand wheel has a ratio, a fine ratio, or coarse. The infeed hand wheel has the same thing. You have your, you, you have your coming in, and if you have your lever here set at the hand, uh, you can bring this, take the stop off, and you can bring your work up to your, your wheel up to your work, or you can pull this out, and you can go a lot faster. So that's pretty much uh, everything you need to know about the, uh, the workings of this in this configuration. We're going to get the machine uh, set up. We're going to have to back it off and spin the head around. I'll show you how that's done when we come back. All right, so here we have the machine now safely turned around uh, to use this grinding wheel if you were going to do some kind of face grinding. But what I did, I just made sure that my wheels weren't going to hit anything. It's, this machine is pretty long. Uh, you don't really have to take the tailstock off. But this is where we were. And there's two levers on top here. This one on the, this side is just a clamp. This one is a clamp and it disengages. So it has a pin, a spring pin. See that? That drops in and then you tighten it. And when you pull it all the way back, you're lifting that pin out so that you can rotate this. And when we go to this angle, I'll just let this off and when it gets where it needs to be, you give it another little jiggle, but it's locked in. It has three points. It has this point, has one that's completely turned around so that we have this ID spindle over here and when it's in the front. <clears throat> so now you put the clamp on, we can put the other clamp on. So you have to remember that this is also going to come forward. You want to make sure you don't have your table on 
If your table shut off, that's this valve here. And you're going to have your in-feed mode uh, in the hand so that you could just work this by hand. And you're going to want to come in by hand. This is not an operation that you were going to do uh, automatically. This is just this is a tool room machine that can do this kind of work. But, you know, this is not automated. This takes, you know, has somebody actually doing this, and then when they're, when they're positive, everything is okay, they can, they, can, they can send the head back. You can also have this head come in and stay in uh, by turning this knob to this position for internal grinding, which will let me have my lever on, giving me my work head, but when I go back, this is not going to move. You just turn this on and do your hand work and then stop the work head and this is not going in and out. Normally it would go in and out if you had it on the A setting, the automatic. Now that the lever is off, the wheel slide went back. Okay. ID grinding. Again, you loosen this up. Move your table out of the way. Make sure nothing's going to hit anywhere. Move that till it locks in. And now you have your ID spindle here. It's a little cover. Don't have a belt on it right now. Um, but it runs off the same motor as the grinding spindle. This particular spindle is uh, an oil mist lubricated, so if we're going to use this spindle, uh, it's going to need uh, an oil mist system. Now when you're doing this, let's pretend we're bringing this into our workpiece. You have to remember now, I'm not even forward yet. So let's say I came forward. All right, so here we are again with the spindle turned around, and uh, now we have the hydraulics turned on so that when I do that, it moves forward and back, and the headstock comes on and off. But when you're ID grinding, you want to bring this slide forward, and you, you need to put it in the ID mode, which is a little eye on here. But this will prevent that ever from going back you know, and crashing your tool and grinding wheel and, and, and uh, grinding arbor inside of your bore. Uh, you're supposed to move out of the bore first and then send the head back. Uh, but in this case, if you can't always remember to do that, then you have a, sa a setting here, a safety setting, that will uh, allow you to start your cycle. Now, if, if I had my stops put together, I could start a little uh, oscillation, and I could start a little feed also by putting this into our feed. And I can increase that feed. So when our cycle is, you think you're over, when you do back this lever up, as long as you have this set for internal grinding, this amount that you just took off your part will back up inside the bore, but it's not going to crash. And then you carefully, this has a, a lever here where you can go under your stop, then you, then you come out. And that's the way to do the ID grinding. So there you have it, uh, the Kellenberger 1000U. Uh, hope you don't have any other questions. Thank you. All right, so one last thing I wanted to say about the Kellenberger is this uh, hand wheel on top here. Now, this is actually a vertical column that can go up and down. It's very precise. It's very accurate. Uh, more than likely, people don't use it. Uh, we've gone through the whole thing. It does go up and down. Uh, this machine currently has a riser block on it. So if you were going to want to raise this up for some reason, you would have to unscrew the screws that are down here. Uh, that bolt into this uh, block that goes up and down. Um, 
This is not a standard height. I believe this is a, a, raised, a raised height from the factory. Uh, but the reason for this hand wheel actually is that if you could imagine bringing this forward and take this wheel guard is designed so it could be mounted this way. So that your wheel, they actually use this to surface grind. They would set something up even if it was a magnet or some kind of a jig and you could with the table shut off or, or however, uh, they would come down uh, on the part using that hand wheel. They'd raise it up and then slowly, slowly come back down. Um, so I just wanted to explain what that's all about. This, you can move this all around wherever you want it and then lock it down in the back. Put the handle away, out of your way. So that's the elevating hand wheel. That's what that does. That's what that's for. Uh, I've actually seen pictures of where they had something between centers where they were grinding splines into it with a special wheel. So, you know, there are reasons to use it. That's why they made it that way. Okay, thank you.